Welcome back to LearnPAZU.org. Uh, today we're going to continue our discussion of frequency response. And as I mentioned last time, we're going to talk about resonance frequency today. So the resonance frequency uh, depends on both the mass of the system and it depends on the effective elastic, the elastic properties. And with regards to a mass spring damper, uh, this is really quite straightforward. We have uh, our mass here, and we have our damper, uh, which is not really going to play a lot a part in the resonance frequency. Uh, but see the this spring constant K, and this mass M, is going to dictate the resonance frequency, which we're going to donate and denote as F capital R subscript capital R, and in practice, uh, and through deriving the equations, we find that for this system with a linear spring constant and a, uh, and a mass, m, uh, we have the following relationship, k over m. So this is this beginning our description of resonance, and we know that it's related to the mass of the system and the elastic properties. For piezoelectric materials, an actual real systems because this is an idealized system. Uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, remember the uh, spring constant for a piezoelectric material where we have a force you know equals the spring constant K capital K times the delta D which I'm calling displacement. Uh, this is the basic you know equation you usually have a negative here. So the spring constant for you know, I use electric material, let's say we had material such as this, let's say we attached it to a wall and we applied some electric field to it. Or, or sorry, let's not apply electric field, let's short circuit it and apply a stress. So it has a elastic compliance of a S uh, superscript capital E. So in this case, uh, we found that the we found that the spring constant is A over LSE. Uh, as if you can remember the, you know, the mechanical energy in, in a piezoelectric material such as that is actually ALS strain squared. But in this case, we're not writing strain. We're writing this in terms of displacement delta D. So if you multiply this by L squared and L squared, uh, we get D squared, delta D squared from here. Uh, and we get from the bottom part, uh, we get one of these L's canceling and uh, we end up with this expression. So that's how all of that uh, was kind of taken care of. And uh, we know the mass of the system is um, the mass density, uh, which the mass density is measured uh, in terms of kilograms per meter squared. So the mass density times the area times L, which is the length. And remember, the way we're drawing piezoelectric materials right now is that we have the polarization direction. L is the same direction as the polarization direction. The electrode faces are have the area A. So this is basically the expression. And if we use our definition, our simple definition of the resonance frequency, uh, which equal the spring constant divided by the mass square root, uh, which again has the unit cycles per second, or some, most of the time we just ignore that cycles part. So if we uh, insert the equations here, we end up with A L S E. Sorry, this is going to be the angular frequency. 
but we'll worry about that. This is the angular frequency. So actually 2 pi This is going to be omega r. And if you want in real terms, meaning 1 over cycles per second, this is cycles per radian. Uh, so we would have to multiply this term by 2 pi uh, to get rid of the cycles term. And then thus we'll have this uh, angular frequency. Uh, just as a, I guess a reminder, uh, the angular frequency is cycles per second. Sorry, the angular frequency is radians per second. And the actual frequency that we kind of have an idea about is cycles per second. So how many times uh, does this happen per second? This is how many times, how many radians this happens per second. Uh, this is a more physical kind of set of value. So this is why we use this 2 pi terms, 2 pi radians per cycle, and we use it to uh, convert back to frequency. So anyways, uh, we were going over the uh, equivalent expression of the resonance frequency. So we have the rho A L. This ends up being these L's A's end up canceling out. We end up getting a square root of one over S E rho. See we have one A one L here and another L here that means it's gonna come out. Oh not two L sorry. Oh, so all of this, you know, it cancels, it comes out, and it looks like this. This equation, and this is for the case where we have a uh, rod stuck to a wall. Um, this is the resonance frequency uh, for that case where we have a force uh, doing this. For the case where we have uh, a material which is being having having a stress, having the force applied this way and this way. Because if the forces are canceling each other out, this material is going to get bigger, right? Because you're pulling on on both sides. So effectively, uh, if you're if you are pulling on it like this instead of the wall pulling on it, and then you have to be you're pulling only one direction. If you're pulling two directions, you're going to have like a two factor here. Uh, and that's just because the frequency is doubled uh, when you kind of take it out of the wall configuration. This is just a general description. Uh, it's not a detailed. Uh, uh, a detailed understanding. So we can come understand, we can come up with this expression uh, for the resonance frequency, uh, which uh, which kind of you know it allows us to measure the resonance frequency uh, in this way, or or not not measure, but it allows us to calculate it uh, using our simple understanding of what it was, what the resonance frequency was for the mass spring system. So the next question we have is why does it occur? And it occurs because of one reason, and you should remember this reason. It's be it occurs because of maximum stored energy. There's a frequency at which the maximum stored energy in the system occurs. And this frequency is denoted by the resonance frequency. So we can understand uh, this looking at the simple mass spring damper system, uh, which is very useful. And we'll call this distance or displacement, we'll call it delta d which is going to be a time varying uh, expression. So if we are kind of really slowly, you know, pulling and pushing on the material, the phase, now let's look, talk about phase. But first let's talk about, let's, let's draw a little diagram of the different expressions. Well actually we'll, we'll go into this next lesson. Next lesson. 
So this is the kind of introduction to the next video. You know, why does this resonance frequency occur? We kind of got out how to, how to measure it. We know what it depends on. It depends on two factors. It depends on the mass and it depends on the equivalent elastic properties. Uh, and we can kind of derive that for different for this configuration of the piezoelectric material block and this actually uh, this expression it, it, it is valid for all types of materials um, it is valid for all piezoelectric materials I think this too is not supposed to be there uh, I forget at this moment uh, but we'll <laughs> but we'll continue now in the next lecture describing why does this condition occur maximum stored energy but why is there maximum stored energy at a certain frequency that's what we're going to discuss thanks for watching